Why am I struggling to get real-time playback when editing in DaVinci Resolve? This is a very common question that keeps on coming every single day. And in this video, we're going to tackle the issue and see how to improve your editing experience. We will cover codecs, the difference between the free and studio version of DaVinci Resolve, render cache, timeline resolution, proxies, timeline proxy mode, render in place, and the delivery page. Let's get started. So what could be the reason why your timeline is playing back so poorly? Well, there's actually a few reasons and some of them are easier to solve than others. Let's start with codecs. We could make an entire video about codecs and how they are working, but to make it short, they are compression technologies. Computer code that will manage a data stream into a more manageable package, either at a software or hardware level. What people might not know or fully understand is that modern cameras are using a variety of codecs and they are not all designed equally. Consumer or prosumer cameras often record with highly efficient codec using temporal compression. This makes them great at recording a lot of data into a small package. The downside is that those very efficient codecs are not designed with video editing in mind. They require intense computing to decode and smooth playback or scrubbing might be very difficult to achieve without a massive amount of power or a dedicated hardware decoder. Cinecamera, on the other hand, are a little less concerned about storage space and are built with much more expensive components. They will favor high bitrate, raw recording, or the ability to record in-camera proxies that are editing friendly. On the software side, there's actually a lot of confusion about the difference in performance between the free and the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. Yes, the free version will use your GPU for image processing, even multiple GPUs if you're on Mac. But only the studio version offers hardware acceleration to decode H.264 and H.265 media, incompatible hardware. To see if this option is activated, go to the DaVinci Resolve menu, select Preferences, and in Decode Options, make sure that this feature is checked. And while we are here, switch to the user tab, select playback settings, and set performance mode to automatic or manual if you want to fine tune how DaVinci Resolve optimize your experience. You can also activate those two options, hide UI overlays and minimize interface updates if you need to optimize even further playback performance. We have here two instances of the same video stored in different physical storage, one mechanical hard drive and one SSD. And we also have the same clips playing at 25 frames per second or 50% of the original frame rate. This 4K 50fps clip was encoded in camera with what might be the least editing friendly codec of the moment. H265 with a 422 chroma self sampling and 10 bits color depth. This is an awful lot of data to process and we are going to see how this is impacting our ability to play it back in real time. Let's play those clips and see if storage speed make any difference. As you can see right away, the playback performance is quite terrible and there is no real difference between the clip playing from the mechanical drive and the one on the SSD. The CPU is maxing out while the GPU isn't even flexing. So storage speed isn't the limiting factor in this case. How's that? Well, while modern GPUs like the RTX 2000 and 2000 series have an H.265 decoder built in, they are not capable to decode 10 bits 422. We normally don't have this issue because we record with a DNX HR codec on Ninja 5 but if you do use H.265 as a recording codec, no matter how powerful is your GPU, you would have to brute force your way through with a beefy CPU to achieve real-time playback. Now look at what's happening when we play the same clips at half the frame rate. It's playing smoothly, even on the mechanical drive. Notice how you reach real-time playback while the CPU is working half as much. One of the great benefits of shooting at low frame rate is that beyond the cinematic feel or motion blur, there is a lot less frames to be processed. This is something very interesting and could even be a factor when you decide next time how to shoot a sequence. But that of course is not a solution, so how do we achieve better performance at all time? First step is to understand and master the render cache. Caching is the process of rendering your clips, including any color grade or effects, into a more friendly format. You can control this by going to the playback menu, hover render cache and choose one of those options. Smart will let DaVinci Resolve automatically choose which clip will be cached, while User will let you have full control over which clip should be cached rendered and this can save both time and storage space. I am choosing user mode as this will be perfect to test out different performance scenarios. Also, I am deleting the render cache to make sure that we are starting fresh. In user mode, to cache a clip, you need to right click on it and choose a render cache color output. Immediately, 
you notice a red bar above your clip that will slowly change to blue as your cache is being rendered. Rendering is done in the background when DaVinci Resolve is inactive and we can see that both the CPU and GPU are at work rendering the cache. Now that the clip is cached, playback should normally be smooth. Well, I'm going to show you an issue that might happen to you so you know how to fix it. We play the clip and notice that the playback is as poor as ever and that the CPU is working as if there was no cache at all. Okay, pay attention at what's happening when I reactivate this button that when grayed out, bypasses color grays and fusion effects. The clip is now playing smoothly and the CPU isn't even breaking a sweat. This might sound weird, but this is because this feature not only bypasses color grades and effects, but the whole render cache as well. Yet another reason why you shouldn't edit on this kind of codec. I am switching to the color page to add my color grade, and as you can see, all the nodes are manually disabled. To enable those nodes, I can just select them and press Ctrl plus D. Going back to the edit page, and right away, the render cache is being replaced to include the color grade. The CPU is still busy decoding, but as image processing is handled by the GPU, we can see it actively working. Let's play the clip again, and now that the render cache is properly working, look at how smooth is our playback while the CPU is just chilling. The render cache is a great feature, but as we are still working with the H.265 codec, the smallest edit will drive your CPU usage through the roof as your render cache is being recreated. A popular advice would be to reduce your timeline resolution down to HD, as even if your source media is 4K and you want to export at the same resolution, you do not need to edit on a 4K timeline. This will make the amount of data to be rendered dramatically reduced, but as we are still working with the dreaded H.265, it won't actually make much of a difference. Let's see why. Go to File, Project Settings, and here you can simply change your timeline resolution down to HD and save. Did the playback of non-cache clip improve? Clearly not, because the CPU still has to decode the source clip the exact same way before the GPU can even render it at a lower resolution. Okay, we got it. Editing with this kind of codec is generally a very bad idea. So what do we do now? Proxies are something that so many creators are trying to avoid because it is requiring a one-time extra processing. But trust me, this is how you should treat your media. The good news is that DaVinci Resolve is making dealing with proxies really simple. In the project settings, I reverted my timeline resolution to 4K and we show you how to properly set your proxies. In Optimize Media and Render Cache, you will find plenty of options to fine tune the way that DaVinci Resolve is handling those different features. Proxy Media Resolution will let you choose if your media is transcoded at full resolution, half, quarter, and well, you get the idea. This alone can make editing super high resolution footage feel like a breathe even on a lower spec computer. In Proxy Media Format, choice of transcoding codec will depend on your platform. Windows and Linux users can use different variety of DNX codec, while Mac users also have access to ProRes. The type you choose will impact the bitrate, chroma, bit depth, and size of your proxies, but I could go down to DNX HRSQ and still retain a pretty good image quality. If you would like to learn more about each of them, we added a link to an excellent article by Frame.io in the description. Optimized media are a bit of a legacy feature now that DaVinci Resolve is capable to create proxies internally. The clips created are only accessible within your project and can't be used to easily share with others like you can with proxies. Blackmagic Design itself is recommending using proxies over optimized media. You can also change the render cache format to speed up rendering time, maximize performance, and reduce the size of your render cache. While you are in the master settings, you can optimize your working folders. Those are used by DaVinci Resolve to store your proxies, the render cache, and the gallery seals. Setting them to separate fast drives will improve DaVinci Resolve performance dramatically. Saving, and we can immediately notice that the cache is being rendered with that lighter codec. And as much as color grading 10 and 12 bits footage makes a massive difference, you won't need it while editing. Now that everything is set, let's see how to create those proxies. Right-click on the clip and simply choose Generate Proxy Media. This will transcode the entire source video into an editing-friendly format. Once completed, playback will be completely smooth even though this clip isn't rendered in cache. And look at how the CPU usage is at the minimum. While editing, if you find yourself in a situation where you need a quick extra boost, there's an incredible feature called Timeline Proxy Mode that will render your timeline at half or quarter resolution without having to change your project settings. You might be wondering why I didn't show you this feature earlier when we were struggling to achieve a smooth playback with the H.265 codec. Well, as with changing the timeline resolution, Timeline Proxy Mode will still require decoding the media first before being able to kick in. 
and then wouldn't happen. The last feature is render in place and this will come real handy when you start using noise reduction or heavy fusion effects. Select your clip and choose render in place. This will let you render proxy-like version of your clip in the format, codec and type of your choice. And if you need to keep some editing flexibility, you can even include X amount of extra frames handles that will only impact the size of the clips rendered. Click render and the clip will be replaced in the timeline by a flattened version of itself. All those features can be used separately or combined to achieve smooth playback even when editing on a not so powerful system. And that's super useful when you are editing your rush on a laptop, right on the set, or on the go. You might be concerned that using some of those features will affect negatively the quality of your export, but rest assured, rendering will be done using the source media by default. But if you need to make a super fast export, you can choose to use your proxy media or the render cache images to dramatically speed up rendering. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share to help us in our quest to empower our fellow creators. And we'll see you in the next video. See ya!